my name is actually Yigzao Michael, and then I'm, but I'm known as Yegi here. My art name is Yegi, okay. so Yegi Michael. Okay. And I live in Seattle. I've been living here for about uh, now almost 17 years. So. Uh, I've been an artist for a while now, a very long time, and uh, I do specifically like visual art and uh, uh, public art to say and also uh, painting and you know and I exhibit my work around Seattle uh, New York and other places around US yes being an artist is not easy task okay so I've been the full-time artist for many years the last three years I've been working for an organization called DNDA Nature Consortium as an art program director there uh, basically we're helping youth and young kids uh, uh, teaching them environmental lessons through uh, art. Uh, I'm directing that program, but uh, before that, uh, as far as I remember, it's just uh, uh, working as an artist and making my own money as an artist. And my company is called Yegi Studio, and it's been there for a while. So I do uh, public art, and I create art and exhibit my work around uh, everywhere around the United States and also uh, teach art in schools uh, like as a contractor and do projects and workshop uh, for different companies or uh, schools or community centers. So that's how I have been surviving and uh, I've been making a living and it's been great and I'm thankful for that. Well, uh, in Seattle, actually I want to go back a little bit history. In Seattle, I have been uh, designing several places, uh, business places owned by Habesha, Ethiopian or Eritrean. Uh, and then few of them to mention, the very well-known one was uh, Habesha Ethiopia restaurant. I don't know if you remember. Uh, I have designed that place and uh, uh, the artwork and uh, the, the counter pieces, the mosaics, and, and uh, then the whole, uh, uh, space and it's been it's been uh, an amazing work and that was a, uh, a lot of people favorite place to hang out and I also did uh, there was a Gojo restaurant or Pan Africa or uh, coffee shops like Avole I did a big art there so I do here and there in different uh, public places uh, art also like uh, if you uh, go 26 and uh, 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 what do you call that cherry. Uh, there is a big piece there. Uh, it's called Dancing with Nature, and there's also on 21st and Union, uh, Central Cinema, or uh, Paul Ben Yasler. There's a big sculpture there in West Seattle, everywhere. So the public arts are everywhere, and uh, I've done that uh, for the city or for individual companies. Uh, my art, uh, the painting, I exhibit. I do it in my studio and exhibit it in different places as far as New York, Ohio, here, and uh, other places. Um, uh, well, now I work, like I said, as an uh, art program director, but I also kept my art, doing my art uh, as an art business. So Yegi Studio is still functional, uh, but I also have a full-time job. Right now I work from home, because uh, since I started a full-time job, it's kind of hard to keep a studio space and also work uh, full time. So uh, my home is enough for me, like I have a studio at my living space and I work from there. Uh, but for people who want to reach me, uh, you can go to yegistudio.com, which is Y-E-G-G-Y, -G -G -Y, studio as one word, and .com uh, to my website and email me. Or uh, also I will ask people to go to Yegi Studio Facebook page to be fun or Yegi Michael on Facebook to be friends. So I advertise and uh, promote my works through Facebook. So people basically uh, email me and uh, correspond like that and sell. Nowadays, as you know, everything is digital. So really the space needed is not that much uh, necessary for me, especially I'm working full time. So people can communicate with me through phone or uh, email and I can reach and uh, sell the stuff. Uh, but for uh, places sometimes in places I exhibit so I advertise my work like I said in Facebook so uh, this kind of function people will come and uh, see the work. Well Ephraim is the owner of the cafe the Bun, uh, Bunna and then uh, like I said I've been doing work like that so <coughs> one time he asked me he's building this business 
and he might need help with the art. So I said, okay, let's go see the, the space. And uh, we came here and I saw the space and immediately I went back to my, you know, to the work. I gave some idea, but I went back home and sketched it out and I said, we got to do something because he, he, like, he loves coffee and he wants to promote the African coffee, which comes from Ethiopia. And <clears throat> so I, I, I said, if we do that, we need to, you know, me, like I said, I was born in Ethiopia and I'm from an Eritrean family and I'm Eritrean by uh, national, but I, I said, uh, you know, I always bring that cultural uh, feeling to my work and then uh, symbols and uh, writing forms, like the girls writing forms is one of them. So, uh, so I encouraged him to do that and he was open about it. So we did that, but in a contemporary way, not like a traditional, like raw traditional, but because you're trying to reach all kinds of diverse community. And then always it's good to move. Like I always say, culture is not stagnant. Like it doesn't stay in one place. Culture is fluid, it's uh, dynamic. It changed generation to generation in a positive direction. So this material culture that we have, the writing form or the symbols uh, for the next generation to connect with the next generation, especially here, we have to move on with the time. Yeah. So that's why I did a contemporary work. As you see, everybody loves it from every corner of, you know, different kind of background. People connect with the work because it is done in that sense. So. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and I will ask anyone who needs the artwork uh, for their business. I encourage people actually to, to, to hire not only me or other professional artists uh, or, or designers and our culture is beautiful. We have a very strong and beautiful culture that stays thousands of years uh, that we use, whether it's music or visual or material culture or all kind of uh, our culture so we need to have that positive culture bring it together and also actually market it and then bring it because our population is growing here yeah. and we have kids coming up they need to connect with their culture with the language they understand yeah. so uh, so in our business in our places uh, we have to bring that and make it part of our life uh, and then uh, I thank you whoever support us in the past and also if you need to hear more from us go to the website yegistudio.com or my Facebook Yegi Michael uh, find me there thank you so much እንግዲ ተወልጀ ያደኩበት ገጠር ስሜን በየዳ ኢየሱስ ወረዳ no thawlij yadde kondar kifla hager semen awraj aras dashan malatno na kaza bohalam wede katama kas bakas wede adrkay gebichallo ka adrkay bohala yaws kawun balleno sat agarun ta kashal zalkem ya be etopia midirne yaddegno kaza gize jemro skawun dres be muzika alam neberna awun gen tinish muzika konku and 5 amat honoñal አሁን ወደ ተዝታ አገባለሁ ተዝታይ ነይነ ተዝታይ ነይነ ታሽረቅ ዝታ ሸረቅ ከምሳ ማይ በሰማ ዝታ ነይነ በኮሚኒቲ ሆነ በተለያየ ዘርፍ እንግዲህ ስብስብ ስናደርጋ አንድ አንድ ምናቀናጀው መንገድ ይኖራል ማሲንቆዎችም ከየፊናው ማሲንቆዎች ስብስብ ብሎ አንድ ሁለት ሶስት ማሲንቆ አድርጎ የተለያየ መሳሪያዎች አስተካክሎ አንድ አንድ ዘፋኞችም ሲመጡ ከሌላም ሆነ አጠቃላይ ትምርት ሚሰጥባችሁ ለወጣቶች ትምርትን ድንሰጥ 
ፕሮግራም ይወጣና በዛ ፕሮግራም ለወጣቶች ቅኝቶችንም የሙዚቃ ጣሞም አነሳሱም በፈላጎት እንዴት ያለ መንገድ እንደምን ይሄድ ለወጣቶች ለማስተማር ፈቃደኛ ነኝ መስከረ ማለም አይባላሉ በኢትዮጵያ በነበረን ቆይታ ጋዜጠኛ ነበርኩኝ በኢትዮጵያ ቦድካስቲንግ ኮርፖሬሽን በቀድሞ ኢትዮጵያ ቴሌቪዥን በጋዜጠኛነት አምስት አመት ሰርቻለሁ አሁን በራሱ ማለት እዚ መጥቼ እንስራ እንዳለ ስራ ሳስብና ሲሰማው በራሱ በጣም ደስ ያለኝ ምክንያቱም የምትፈልጉ ነገር አለማጣት ምን ያልደስና እንደሚሰጥሽ ምን ገልጸ ነው ያስባሉ ለብዙ ሰውና በትንሹም ቢሆን መስራት ምን ይችላል መስለኛል እዚ በተለይ ደግሞ ኒካ ያለው በትያትል ውስጥ እጅግ በጣም በርካታ ኢትዮጵያዊ በጣም በርካታ የተለያየ ዜጋ ያለው ሰው ነው ያለው እና ኢትዮጵያ ደግሞ እንደተነጋገረ ነው ብዙ ነገር መስራት ምን ይችላል አጋጣሚ ያለ ምናልባት ያንን ስራ ለመስራት የቁሳቁስ ሊሆን ይችላል የጊዜ ሊሆን ይችላል የተለያየ አጋጣሚዎች ላይ መቻቹ ይችላል ነገር ግን ባለውም ቢሆን ማንነታችን ሳንረሳ መስራት ምን ይችላል አጋጣሚ ያለ ብያስባለሁ an art teacher so my arts are my artworks are all over the city i have works at uh, sound transit mm -hmm. i have a piece over there i have some works at the public perspective harborview hospital some city of seattle everywhere you know nice. the bus stops <laughs> i've been doing that for the community sharing my art and talking to a lot of young artists too working with a lot of young artists here at the multimedia resource training so we used to do murals i did a lot of drawings and painting classes here not only teaching as a public school also i teach in the community after school some stuff i, I do a lot of the like mosaic we make a, a lot of public arts so not only teaching full time or also i work in the community our culture ethiopian culture especially you know come in the coming here to 1982 i know so many african american people here and i met a lot of them i this building upstairs it used to be a uh, blues gallery blue moon gallery it used to be a gallery up there i used to show art that owned by african american this is in the 80s you know i'm talking about Damn. yeah so that's amazing you know those galleries were amazing gallery we had shows from all kind of african american artists you know Uh, and also i've been participating in a lot of art shows it's called the matter of color for example that show is to be at, at sand center you know down the, by uh, selsen mm -hmm. sell center it used to be there at that show i showed was jacob lawrence i don't know if you know african american artist I don't know. and james washington all this amazing artists they're not here they're not <laughs> right now but oh. their work is all over the place if you go to the cell art museum i had a show with them other eric and all those african american people that i know and live around here too most of them and now you see what's going on yeah. you don't see a lot of people that you know yeah, yeah. You know, now we see some but not a lot that's changed you know that's that's affected a lot of people biggest challenge is to me is uh before it used to be i think affordable to have a studio for example as an artist you know mm -hmm. Across the street, right on 23rd and uh, Union, the Church and Union. I used to have a studio there. It used to be an old uh, warehouse. Sometimes uh, they used to sell all kind of goods and stuff. We, and when they left, we made a studio there. And then I used to have a studio, and I was paying $150 a month for that big studio. Oh, okay. And we were doing all kind of stuff there as an artist. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to rent a place for $150. <laughs> probably it's a little bus stop yeah. <laughs> you can be hanging around for 150 bucks yeah. I don't think you can get a studio that uh, that price and I see a lot of people a lot of my friends moving from this area because they can't afford it right so the artists are not here anymore so if there is no artist community for me it's gonna be hard to have inspiration you know for to do artwork because mm -hmm. you need that community yeah. you know to inspire each other and to do um, work together and uh, right now all the artists are far away because yeah. they're not in this community. Right. Uh, so this type of things affects all of us because without the artists the community would be like a, without water or electricity, you know? So this is very important to have to make sure you have affordable housing for artists and people who are really creative people. 
My contribution is be, uh, he, being here, work with the youth. You guys here at <laughs> Multimedia Resource Training Institute and uh, been at ATOE's media, telling stories sometimes, sometimes interviewing people around here, go take pictures sometimes, put my artwork. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I've been in a gallery, showing my work, my culture, and be positive about things, you know, be myself. Those are the things my contributions are. Okay, East African Arts and Cultural Association was first uh, formed in, nine, uh, in 2010. And then when we started it, me and um, another friend of mine, mm -hmm. he's from Somalia, there. So what we try, we want to get some Africans, professionals, to come and do some poetry, drum sessions, whatever, you know, art-wise. And then we said, how do we do that? We can't hire those people, they charge a lot of money. Yeah. If you have a non-profit, then we can get them for a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. Also, they will be happy to have non-profit. Right. So we got that non-profit started. We don't have an organization that helps with arts and culture, right? Mm -hmm. If you look for one now, it's hard to get one. You have to go to community centers or something like that. Because East Africans include all the Somalis, Eritrean, the Ethiopians, the Sudan, you know, all that area. Yeah. So, and now I know a lot of East African artists and, or people that came from East Africa. So, once we got that, we started working on, you know, organizing people. We did a lot of arts and cooking, mm -hmm. all kinds of this kind of games, drawings, printing, all kinds of, we did that. And then, now, we're having, a new, you know, this July, we're gonna do a East African community. All together, we're gonna celebrate that. For this celebration, the mayor's supporting us, the city of Seattle is supporting us right now. So. We got some fun from them now. We're gonna do a big festival that day. We're gonna have the youth doing some art in there. We're gonna display some art from the artists from that region, from East African region. And then also we're gonna have some food, some music. So we're gonna do all kind of stuff that day to say that we East Africans, we are here to do our thing and to do good things. And to show them our, you know, whatever our culture is, our, uh, food our what we are in general you know so that's what this uh, july 3rd i think that's what we're going to be doing i hope we're going to invite the mayors and the city officials and people from our community to come and uh, participate on this <laughs>no denial that uh, we have contributed to the central community, even to Seattle. African restaurant, Ethiopian restaurant for a long time, mm -hmm. and it become an icon to Ethiopia. Yeah. And uh, our restaurant, the food also is different, mm -hmm. and it become very, very popular. As I told you, there was a line to <laughs> get it. The Ethiopians brought the same culture, I mean different culture. Mm -hmm. the, Ken the Kenyans, the Nigerians bring their own culture. Mm -hmm. And we like it or not, somehow that has some influence in the people who used to live there earlier. And they learn from us and we learn from them. You know, culture, we like it or not, it's not by formula or by uh, some kind of um, uh, plan. Mm -hmm. 
you influence other people's influence, unless you suppress other culture, you know. But in a free society, people come up with their own culture, and it's so natural. People learn one from the other. Sure. As much as we brought and contributed to uh, center district, because most of the Ethiopians uh, concentrated and reside in this area because at that time it was predominantly uh, populated by African Americans. Mm -hmm. As I told you, this is a new experience to the Seattle population and our way of eating is totally different than they are used to. Mm -hmm. uh, and we use our fingers and we don't use any utensils. So that's one major changes and different than they are used to. And it's amazing. Some of the things happen at the restaurants by Americans might not think it happens as an, when you think about it as an Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. Most of the people when we present in Jera on the side, and what they did is, it's not one person or two person, several of them. Mm -hmm. What they do is, if there is their first experience, they think that's a napkin. <laughs> and they put it here. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, but most of them, they told me, they like the idea of eating together in one platter. And American, you know, is all individualistic way of life and everything is shaped towards individualism and they eat by themselves, everybody's, you know, no sharing. So the idea of sharing, amazingly, which we think is natural for us, for them, it was a very strange thing. My name is Fasika Mogas. Today I'm opening this finishing by Gallery 2929 Renera Avenue. At least I have more than 65 pieces. This is between two countries, uh, Seattle and, and, and <coughs> Ethiopia. They had a long relationship, very long time. During Alice Selassie, they came to... Yeah, th this is an axle. Uh, this is a space needle. So they're connected with... This is Apple, this is like... A, uh, the process of uh, kind of wine or beer or something they do it in Ethiopia and musical connection and numbers connections so this is the King Selassie when he was in to Seattle he donated a lot of money I don't know how much it is for World Fair in Seattle when they built the Space Needle he, do he donated yeah that's why he's very historical so also artist mind but you have to look at it very detailed to find out these things these are like uh, <coughs> yeah the numbers the singers music music instruments and acts from here also and crar guitar and years these are these are friends oil on canvas which is a, the pot they are carrying their neighbors every day bringing water to the home to feed the family so water carrying in Ethiopia is very special from one place to another. And then this is about love, music, you can tell, or, or crash. So I call it crash, this one is crash. This one is oil on canvas, it's my favorite painting. It is like showing the power of women when they come together. That's, that's the line and the confidence, the way they're standing with the chest high. So, I did a lot of things with this kind of uh, profession. I'm capable to do a lot more, so please contact me and then any question you have, uh, art, artofzaali.com, website, phone number 206-915-6498. You can call me anytime. 
Uh, my name is Kate Harkins. I am an artist. I'm here because I've known Fasika for uh, more than 10 years, and I really enjoy his art and his personality. He has very intense colors and very uh, strong composition, a lot of rhythm in his work, and it's uh, powerful, very enjoyable. There's a lot of things I respond to personally. And also I know Ad Masu is a very uh, wonderful guy and I'm really happy for him to have this gallery. Yes, I'm a member of Columbia City Gallery, which is an artist co-op and that's where I met Fasika and we enjoyed some time there together. He just became better at making all the strong colors and the rhythm work together. I mean, he makes a complicated painting often, not always, but often. And to make all that complication effective, you have to really practice and understand what is too much, what is not enough, what is your emphasis. And um, he, he keeps at it and becomes a stronger painter, and we're all lucky for that. I enjoyed getting to know Fasica, but there's a lot to a person and what he paints and his homeland and what he responds to. So for me, the work is effective by itself, no matter what you know. Um, it's, a, it's a successful piece. It's not a, a note about a feeling or a time. It's a successful piece. Like when I look at the artist's mind, I laugh. <laughs> because I know what's in my mind has some similarity to that. So that's like... He, a joke that he makes that I understand, but it's not completely a joke because there's sophistication and pattern in there that's wonderful and we, we treasure that. You know, the world has so much boring in it and so artists have to treasure the interesting things that happen in their mind. I'm very impressed. I'm very glad. I say congratulations to Fasika. I say congratulations to Admasu. And uh, if you had a part in it too, congratulations to you. It's an exhibition. Ethiopian Bahlawi Asasal Zee and contemporary yemi balon on on yet sarayalon art style ya katete no ehnyawun sara bitemelekechi tigikelenyawun etiopia traditional style yemi asaye no selezi bezi show kawun befitem benebarut sidist exhibitionoch kezi befite yenebarut lemasayet yetarkut Ethiopian traditional, we have the Bahlawi Asasal Zay, the contemporary, 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 we have Ethiopian art and Ethiopian culture promote Ethiopian Selena, Ethiopian Bahad, Lamastok. Agatami Fatral and let us have Savo Siaru, Celes Lu Sinagaru, and you Casul like a meot Nagar, Balachon, let a master house, and you Macarabichalu, and the Madneki Jamaru, Nano Alamayano, and do. Uh, it's a very beautiful show. Uh, I'm very proud to be here and uh, to see artwork from Ethiopia because we don't usually get an opportunity. Um, to see artwork like this. Uh, I myself are, I, I'm an artist too, so it's very inspiring for me to see this kind of work. So uh, I'm really proud and uh, enjoying the show to be here.
East African culture really influences some. For example, you are a high school student. I know for sure half of them they know injera around here. I, will, I like I have a small store and it used to be almost 90 percent of my customers used to be African Americans and all of the, almost everyone who comes and tells me do you have injera do you have tips so those are the things it's slow but a, a, a big influence uh, it takes a lot of effort because Ethiopians, Eritreans, Somalis open their f restaurants they open their church mosques around here they it may not direct but they become part of the central district. Most uh, central district residents, African Americans, started to move. A lot of Ethiopians, Eritreans also started to move south because the rent is expensive. But still, there are a lot of communities. They want, they are still here. They feel this is their second home. Mm -hmm. I have a store for almost 12 years in central district, and I feel this is my home. I am very comfortable. I spend hours, years around here. So I feel really this is my second home. So that's how it may not be direct, but small, gradual influence here. At the, the church around here, the restaurants, are the symbol of East Africa. Like I say, it could be our food, it could be our music, our dress. It's a matter of time, but the influence will grow.